Episode 1, Voices of the Past. I woke up early in the morning. I slept badly and restlessly and finally crept out of bed at dawn. At the same time as I did, I overheard the Chauhans moving downstairs. As Sana's guardians, they had to accompany her on her last journey. As soon as Sana accepted the status of White Widow, she was accepted to sever... She was expected to sever all contacts and connections and become a hermit. From then on, she was supposed to roam around the world alone, living in poverty until death. Damn. Like, that's... That's wow. Just because her husband was killed and she was married to him for, I don't know, five minutes. And still, anything was better than being burned alive. Are you sure about that? She has to roam around the world alone forever. I don't think that's something positive. I was not allowed to say goodbye to Sana. Priyanka kept looking askance at me since the maid had said those last words to me. Beware of the enemies that rule from the shadows. Mm Mm-hmm. Like I said, my two suspects are my soulmate Amrit and Mr. Vaish. He started being sus to me early in the episodes already. I've had to take into consideration all the warnings I had received during my stay in Calcutta. I should have been worried about practically everything. Yeah, I sluggishly got out of bed, intending to at least make myself presentable. I don't wanna. You know what? Go like this, girl. Go like this. Go the European style. Sana has warned me about danger more than once. And even when she was doomed herself, she didn't stop her attempts to tell me about something. She said that someone was getting rid of her this way. I think they wanted to get rid of both of them. Mana was used. They needed someone to become the groom so that they could kill him and leave Sana no choice. Why did they choose Manu? I don't understand. Because he was the lesser evil. I think they killed Manu because he knew too much. He knew about the old relics. These murders, these sacrifices are of the, the goddess Kali. He knew about the different kinds of Hinduism. So he knew too much about that and he could have, I don't know, exposed them, exposed their plans. So they wanted to get rid of him. And they seeked a great opportunity to get rid of Sana because apparently I would say we play a bigger uh, part in this picture here. And if we know we can fight against what they're planning to do to us or what they're planning to use us for. So they said, I'm going to get rid of Manu because he knows too much and I'm going to get rid of Sana so that she keeps her mouth shut. Why did they choose Manu? I don't understand. Unless... Unless... He let me enter the library. It was his fault that I ended up inside and stole the book. Could that be what caused his death? That could also be a factor, yeah. As soon as this thought formed in my head, I was hit by an overwhelming feeling of guilt. I started nervously fiddling with the fabric of my clothes, my mind racing with the possibilities of what could have happened. But there may have been other reasons. He could have kept dangerous company or crossed someone's path. But it all comes down to the wedding in Sana. As I thought more and more about my guess, I realized if he was really killed because he helped me, then the owners of the library are involved in this. And that means Amrit Dubai, Mm, my soulmate. I clasped my hands behind my back and started pacing the room. I already said that he was sus. Him and Vaish. Manu was talking to someone before the ceremony and the person was giving him orders. I can't say for sure if it was Dubai's voice, but that man sounded very authoritative. What if this is all directly connected to our ritual murders? The knife that was used to murder Manu looked as though it had been designed specifically for rituals. Although the way in which he was killed is very different from our cases. Plus, there was only one killer, contrary to my recent thoughts that several people are involved in our murders. Especially if I listen to Sana. She has no reason to lie. They try to get rid of her right away, which means they wanted to silence her. Yes! She's finally uh, pulling the strings in her head. I folded my arms and kept thinking. Anyway, there is no use in wondering uh, wondering about all this by myself. Oh, then get your friends. But 
By lunchtime, I was already at the embassy. My colleagues arranged a meeting in the cafeteria. Killian met me there. Oh, okay. Isn't that what he was wearing at the wedding? Ooh. But, oh, hey, oh my god. Yes, yes, yes. He's fine. Oh my god, he has a tattoo. Oh, he looks fine. All your relationships have improved. Uh, thank you. And Lima. Oh, we can... Ooh. Okay. I love when her hair is open. You know what? We have been wearing zadis all the time. Let her wear a sari and jewelry. Let her show her beauty. All your relationships. Let's go. I noticed a tattoo on Killian's arm and at first I didn't believe my eyes. Is that a tattoo? Killian nodded, calmly looking down at his hand. Yes, I've already explained everything to Lima. One of the consequences of my ugly past. I couldn't get rid of them. Nah, leave them on. They're hot. Wow. I understand you surprised me. Oh, sir, I'm turned on more than anything. I love tattoos. A military man in the civil service in this. I try to cover them up usually. Don't, sir. Don't. But it seems that there are no formalities left between us. And it's a little too hot and long sleeves close, you know. That's fine with me. Leave them off. We sat down at a table and Killian made us coffee. I've been thinking about what happened at the wedding. It's pretty obvious that everything was permediated. That much is clear. I wonder whether the groom's murder is related to our investigation. I have a feeling that everything is connected, but it may just be our paranoia. There is some shitty going on in Calcutta, and many know about it. But they won't let strangers into it. I tried talking to guests yesterday. Everyone turned their nose at, up at me. <laughs> you can't blame them, and yes, it's annoying. They're hiding something. Rage of goddess, let's go, okay, apparently. People constantly exchange glances and keep silent about something. That still bothers me that we weren't allowed back into the archive. Even Ratan couldn't get us in. Where is he, by the way? He went off the grid. So did the company he worked for. They have all vanished. I knew it. I knew it. This man. This man is... He's hiding something. He's sus. Are you responsible for the murders, Ratan? Actions speak louder than words. He put all sorts of ideas into my head. He had been saying odd things in, his, in this aura around him. Anyway, he really let us down. Yes. Now we have to either be on our own or look for another guide. What are we going to do about the archive? If the other bodies haven't been found yet, the absence of ongoing cases will prove it. Your colleagues remembered your previous assumption. Okay. Killian rubbed his chin. Let's go somewhere else. There are too many curious ears around here. <laughs> we went to the embassy courtyard. The air was humid and heavy. A sign that a storm was brewing. Killian got straight to the point. I think they won't let us go through their papers. They didn't even let us back into the archive. So for them to let us poke our noses into the database or the ongoing cases, we shouldn't even dream about it. Lima sank onto the bench exhausted looking at us. I don't want to return to London empty-handed after everything we saw in Calcutta. The murder at the wedding really threw me for a loop. We need to find out the truth and the exact number of victims at any cost. I started thinking about how we could get into the archive. One thought became louder than the others. It was completely absurd and wrong, and therefore possibly the most effective. Uh-oh. We can sneak in at night. You are so... Girl. <laughs> yes, and get an earful from our superiors when they find out. <laughs> Killian, yes. How are they ever going to find out? Unless you tell them, of course. How do you see it playing out, Amala? There are police officers there. The building's guarded. If if we get caught, the diplomatic relations between our two countries will be at risk. Do you have any idea how much trouble we'd be in? Besides, we cannot use illegally obtained information in the investigation. Our diplomatic relations are already at risk. A British citizen was killed during a ritual. Amala... When I said that we needed to get the truth at any cost, I meant something different. Path of loyalty. I crossed my arms over my chest, glancing at my colleagues. To be honest, I'm exhausted and ready to consider any option that will help us solve this case. We have been assigned a task and how to perform it is up to us. The locals aren't helping us. It's almost as if they don't mind living alongside murderers. 
We have to get to the bottom of this, legally or not. Ooh. She said I'm Lin Bei Fong now. We're gonna do this. I'm gonna do this my way, outside the law. Lima and Killian exchanged glances. This is a stupid, reckless idea, and it's a criminal offense. My connections can get us out of the tight spots, but everything has its limits. This is a bad idea. The game is not worth the candle. I need to push them and persuade them. Convince them. <laughs> Sometimes there are things that you can't achieve by totally legal means. Ooh, respect too. My grandfather fled from India from her husband. Contrary to her family's rules and traditions, she was looking for a better life. You, Killian, were an unscrupulous mercenary, and now you're an attaché for the British government. Honest, straightforward methods are great, but if the locals keep getting in the way, we need to find a different way. Resourcefulness, willingness to do anything for the sake of your goal, looking for workarounds, all these distinguished, proactive people from ordinary ones. People who are not submitting to circumstances by, but changing them for their own gain. Your determination is admirable. Killian spread his hands helplessly and nodded wearily. Sorry, you can't, you can't convince me otherwise. Fine, let's think about this, even though it's absurd. To be fair, there's absolute chaos going on around, and we're the only ones trying to play by the rules, so to hell with them. The British government has a personal interest in this case. We have to act quickly. What? But Lywood didn't answer. If we find something in the archive, how will we explain it in our report? We'll make something up. I'm sure we won't be the first ones to do that, and we won't be the last. Woo! We went home, agreeing to consider my option. Killian decided to walk me home. As it was dangerous for me to walk alone, we were silent all the way. When we got there, Killian stopped. I'm going back to the hotel. I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. Why? Killian. Go. Try to mend the relationships. Suggest being just friends. I don't even know at this point. Say goodbye. Oh, God. Oh. Suggest being just friends. Try to mend the relationship. Honestly, at this point, I don't even know anymore. I don't know if we... I would like to have... Amrit as a boyfriend, but I don't know if that's possible. Oh, I don't even know, but I don't want to just say goodbye, like leave. We had a romantic moment with him. I have a connection to Killian, and I don't want to lose this man. Try to mend the relationship. I don't know, so just being just friends. Like I said, I'm gonna play every route so from there on. Killian, wait. He turned around. Good. Let's put things back the way they were. Let's go back to being good colleagues and friends. It's hard to build a relationship now. I wish I had told you right away. I was so confused. Contrary to my expectations, Killian smiled. No need to worry. I agree with you. Let's go back to the way things were before. It's hard for me to see you as a friend yet, but I'll try my best. Killian! Oh. I'm glad you're being honest with me. I love this man to the ends of the earth. This man is actually me. This man is me. If I don't get... Is, if I don't even know. I don't know this story, people. If Amrit is not a rude... Just for chapter 12, I'm gonna replay the entire season. And uh, pick uh, Killian. It's what you deserve. That. Killian said goodbye to me. It's good that we talked. I feel so much better. Now you're just friends. Mm -hmm. I was about to enter the house when I noticed a small black box by the front door there was a flower next to it a gift who is this uh, who is trying to poison me a card was tied to the stem of the rose there was an inscription on the front from a to a huh from armit for me he sent me a gift amrit sent me a gift oh my god this man is trying to poison me already oh god this man is trying to punish me. He's gonna try to poison me. Oh, God. Uh, why? I didn't do anything. I wonder what's inside. I'll open it. Open it. Uh, people die for love. <laughs> Let me stop. I'll just read the back of the card first. Jewelry made of beautiful moonstones is perfect for a woman like you. For a woman like me, he says. Moonstones? When Amrit saw this jewelry, he immediately thought of you. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, that's just a question of mine. 
Did we tell him that we live here? <laughs> Did he know that we live here? So that he could send us this box? Did he know we live here? I opened the box. Oh my god, it's beautiful. Why did he send me a gift all of a sudden? I hadn't noticed much interest on his part. And I'm wary of him after the events at the wedding. <laughs> Same. But I decided to keep the jewelry. I really liked it. I would feel flattered, but I'm still a little creeped out. <laughs> I'm creeped out. As long as this man doesn't uh, prove to me that he's actually innocent, like, right now... You know, it's because he seems sus. It's because he seems sus. Mysterious, all nice and good, but you are sus, Amrit. And so is Vaish. These two have to show me something this season. Once in my room, I changed into my into pajamas and got ready to take some needed rest. In my desk drawer, there was the diplomat's diary that I never got to read. I decided to spend my free evening studying it. An obsessive thought kept circling through my mind. I was visited by the dead whose cases we were investigating. Mr. Rose will probably come to me too. He was insufferable alive, so I'm sure he'll drive me crazy as a boot. But the atmosphere in the room remained the same. There was no green, red, or blue haze. It was all clear. I decided not to overthink it and went to the bedside table to take out the diary. Atmosphere. A moment later, I was sitting on the bed, leafing through Mr. Hayes' diary. I'll take a look at... Hmm. The place where the pages were torn out. I got to the part right before the torn out pages. I started reading. Feel paranoid, haunted by the constant feeling of being watched. I know for sure they are looking for me, but there is no way to return to London. I need to stay in the room, the only place I'm safe. They're waiting for me to come out. I'm terrified of the person accompanying me, Mr... Huh? The line broke off. It ends... Its end must have been on the torn out page. Damn it. I'll take a look at his old notes. I return to the beginning of the diary. The diplomats need handwriting and complete absence of typos caught my eye. That and his schedule where everything was planned down to the minute... He's precise, conscientious, hyper-responsible. That's the first thing I thought of. He's not the kind of person to do stupid things. I'll take a look at the end of the diary. I flipped through the, to the end just before the cover. The notes were erratic jotings as if made in a hurry. Not at all like the pedantic diplomat who wrote every letter of every word as though they were of the utmost importance. Influential family, events of the past, bloody cliff, the cult of pain. It says nothing concrete, just fragments of thoughts, but they're so disturbing. They're making me wonder. I'll take a look at... Think it over. I put away the diary, pondering for a few moments as if I was solving a puzzle in my head. I think he went insane. Someone killed Hayes because of his curiosity. Someone had been stalking the diplomat. I would say someone killed because uh, Hayes because of his, stupi uh, his, <laughs> his stupidity and because of his curiosity. People say curiosity killed the cat. It looks like the diplomat stuck his nose where it didn't belong and got into trouble for it. Although he doesn't appear to be arrogant or particularly curious, but rather a precise and responsible person. No, I need to think of this from another angle. I put away the diary, pondering for a few moments as if I was solving a puzzle in my head. Okay. I can't say he went insane. I don't think that. He was writing about someone looking for him. The hotel staff confirmed that Hayes didn't really leave the room and only accepted food from one trusted person. It can be attributed to paranoia, but in our present circumstances, his fear might have been well-founded. But who could he have been afraid of? There are several possibilities. Your assumption will play a role in the investigation, but I think it was the man who accompanied him, an influential family, a local cult. An influential family, the man who accompanied him, a local cult? At this point, I don't even know. An influential family? He wrote about it at the end of the diary. Besides, only influential people have such power and the ability to have someone followed anywhere. But which family is so influential in Calcutta? Ha <laughs> Brahim's. Only one name came to mind. Mm -hmm. 
Is it the Dubais? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's too early to blame them. They're not the only rich family in a city this big. But I decided to keep this idea in mind. You think the Dubai family has something to do with Hayes disappearing? <laughs> Let Amrit explain first. Where he slithered off to right after Manu's murder, I stood up. The fact that I was talking to myself out loud didn't bother me at all. On the contrary, it was a little calming. I know exactly which direction we should take. Now you have your own theory. The only thing left was to get into the archive and find out the rest. To do this, I needed to wait for Killian's response, even though I knew he wasn't too thrilled about my idea. He values his job, that's understandable, but at the same time he needs to complete this mission. Playing by the rules, we will achieve nothing. Unlike us, the killer breaks them without thinking about it twice. We dined in silence. There was no maid anymore, so the cook set the table and Priyanka served. Arian silently read the newspaper and his wife tried to entertain me with light conversation. Do you have enough clothes, Amala? Should I get you some nudsaris? No, thank you. You look gloomy. That's because I feel sorry for Sana. You ruined Sana's life and didn't even flinch. I'm angry at the way Sana was treated. The guests were very cruel to her. She had only been married for a couple of minutes, but they punished her with the fate of a widow as if she was guilty of something. Ariane put away the newspaper and looked at me sternly. Such are, such are, tra are traditions and rules. You can't change them. What does it have to do with the rules? It's just human cruelty. Even if they had been married for a second, this does not negate the fact that husband's death is the wife's fault the wife's fault atonement for her sins if the husband died right at the wedding can you imagine what the crime sana must have committed before the gods what nonsense but i mean of course they worship kali there i disagree sana's life has been destroyed and I'm not asking you to agree. Just keep quiet. I wasn't asking for your opinion. That. And I did keep quiet. There was no bringing Sana back, so there was no point in arguing with my hosts. She wasn't burnt alive. That's already a mercy. Wandering around somewhere lonely, poor. It's painful to think about. And this is what he calls mercy. You, a British woman, cannot understand this. Don't teach us what's right and what's wrong. I have Indian blood running through my veins. I'm not British. Yes, I'm British, and I don't want such brutality to be considered normal. That. It's dreadful if everyone here holds these views. England is closer to you than India. <laughs> I frowned. It's hard for me to accept these traditions. Kindness of God is path. Maybe I should try to improve my understanding of their culture, delve deeper but it will be extremely difficult. Arian didn't answer anything. He probably didn't want to argue with me either. The conversation faded away awkwardly. Priyanka then spoke in a timid voice. Preshamala has beautifully decorated your room. What? The rose in your room. The variety is called Amalia. And it's such a beautiful. And it's such a beauty. Amalia? Priyanka continued her breakfast. He gave us a flower... That is close to our name. She's talking about the flower that Amrit sent me. Lightning flashed in the gloomy sky and the wind became cooler. I was going to meet my colleagues at the market. After a while, Killian and Lima arrived. I've been watching the department for several days and all their shifts. So you agree? Don't be so happy, Amala. If we get caught, all three of us will be in serious trouble. It's just a shortcut. Asking for help from above would be a bureaucratic nightmare. Thanks anyways. I'm glad we were able to come to an agreement. I promise to be careful. Killian's gaze softened a little. Well, I'll try. You have grown closer. Aww. So how do we do this? Now, it won't be easy to get in there. No, it's simple. We need to distract two officers on duty. There is no need to be afraid of CCTV. They don't have any yet. And we need one person to warn us and distract the officers in case something happens. Lakshman came to mind, but he would never agree to help me. One of us will have to volunteer. I'll take care of everything. I'm the most suited for this job. I could do it. 
than be a hero. Let's do what's logical. Lima didn't argue, and there was no point in choosing me as if I was the only one who could read and translate the text, but... The locals won't help you, so you have to manage on your own. And what will we do with the officers? We need to distract them somehow, gently without harming them. And we need a plan B, maybe some kind of sedative. Grandma was good with herbs. When I had a headache at or Kieran's back hurt after training, she always brewed us some sort of concussion, and they work great. But will I remember how to make one? I know a recipe. Mom used to suffer from insomnia. Ooh, grandma would make a herbal remedy, and mom fell asleep within ten minutes. To respect, let's go. It's an old Indian recipe, but I remember it well. Seriously? A this could help us a lot. The recipe will help in the future. Your colleagues' respect for you has increased. Let's go. We need lavender, thyme, peppermint oil, and pasque flower. The latter is a rather rare plant, but I think we can find it. We started buying the necessary ingredients. We bought ready-made spices, so I didn't have to grind them in a mortar myself. Shock me. Shock me. I'm done. Ooh. Is it normal that it's green? There was only one thing left to do. We followed Killian's plan. He paid some local boys and girls and I explained to them what to do. The local children will help you distract the officers. Oh, that's cute. They would make some noise near the department to attract attention and then scatter. Many of them were skilled thieves surviving only in this way. Teasing the police and running away was not something that they hadn't done before. This would have given us half an hour in the archive no more. Let's go. Upon hearing some noises, the officers left the department, hurrying to sort out the mess which we arranged. Killian entered first. If someone was left inside, he would immediately deal with them without any fuss. To our surprise, there really were two officers left inside, but both were peacefully dozing in their chairs in front of the TV. The door was open. There were half-finished tea and half-eaten rotis next to them. I couldn't believe my eyes, I whispered. You said there were only two officers on duty, didn't you? Usually, yes. And we saw two come out, so there must have been four in total. But why? We took a closer look. There were a couple of bottles on the table. Maybe they came to pass the time. What happens if your coke quotient is mixed with alcohol? I don't know. I've never tried, but they seem sound asleep. The horrible connection saved you some time. And some trouble. The atmosphere is inviting. The warmth, the soothing sound of the TV, no work to do, and a nice ring before bed. I don't know, BRC. The main thing is to get the information we need. Let's do everything quietly and leave. Yeah, N we need the information. Turn over the file cabinets if you have to. We don't have time. I'll go outside and be on the lookout. If the officers come back early, I'll think of something. Be as quick as you can. Not wasting another minute, we quickly entered the archive. I'm going to look through the photos in the ongoing cases to help you. Thank you. Lima began to rummage through the desks and folders. Killian overestimated them. There are only typewriters everywhere. If something is filled, everything must be in the archive or in the car current case folders. Take the ongoing cases, I'll look in the archive. The air inside was stuffy as usual. The damp, stale smell and the low ceiling would have made anyone feel claustrophobic. I immediately rushed to the shelves with non-local cases, which were usually brought in from small towns. As there were better specialists in Calcutta, these cases were sent here for a more through investigation. As a result, many cases were dropped and sent to the archive. Well, 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 looking for something close to Calcutta. I sat down, skimming through the case folders. At some point, I got a little dizzy. I felt queasy. The all-too-familiar feeling caused me to panic. Oh, no, 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 not again. Everything went dark. Hmm. Great. And there is ore. Old boss, when I opened my eyes, the archive was immersed in a green haze. No, please, not here, not now. I smelled incense and decomposition. Damn it. 
I got to my feet, already knowing what I was going to see. A shadow moved between the shelves and floated in the light. Yikes. Oh my god. Here you are. And of course they leave it like this. Of course they leave it like this. Why wouldn't they? So, we didn't find out anything yet. But yeah, Zana is officially gone. I'm gonna miss her so much. And the last thing we saw was Mr. Rose. The boot Mr. Rose. And I'm intrigued to know how this conversation is gonna be. Because we actually knew him. And this is probably gonna be traumatizing for her. And for me as well. So yeah, that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Tell me in the comments below what you think was best. And I will see you in episode 2. Bye.